So when you've got oil pressure warning light issue on these, they're a real nightmare, the N43 engine. Now, the big misconception I want to share with you is that people on these forums who think they know everything see how it's nice and tight, that. Basically, on these engines, they say, oh, if it's all slack, you've got a problem with your engine and all that business. But when you turn that engine over, it will be slack. Six cylinder, less slack, but four cylinder. In between the valve overlap, you will have some slack in it. It's absolutely normal, right? If you've got slack all the time, then there's an issue. And the issue being that you get a lot of bits in the sump and it smashes the guides up and it blocks the suction pipe. So what I'm doing now is on this engine, I've just loosened the alternator now, basically. Because what I want to do is I want to check the, what people call oil pressure relief valve. It's nothing to do with that. The oil pump on these engines is map control, which means it has a special program the control unit, the DME, basically what it does, it only delivers the quantity of oil needed for that particular engine operating range in terms of RPM. So it doesn't work on volumetric principle, it works on electrical principle. And basically there's the valve. That's the oil pressure control valve. It's not a relief valve or anything like that. That is pulse width modulated. And what that will actually do is it will operate and increase or decrease the oil flow to the engine. Simple as that. So it'll go one way to increase the oil pressure and go the other way to bleed it off and decrease the oil pressure. Unfortunately, they do get blocked up. There's a small uh, mesh filter on there, which I'll take off and show you. This was replaced last year, but I need to check again. If there's more bits on it, then the only thing you can do with this particular engine in that sense is strip it and clean it all out but it's not as easy as that, is it? Because once it's in the oil galleries, you're kind of in trouble, you know? But we'll whip that out now and have a look. And we can always measure the oil pressure, but really, to be honest with you, it's, it's such a sporadic fault that you wouldn't find anything. Most people change the oil sensor. Oil pressure sensor is just there. I'll just clear this out of the way. And we can probably see it. The zoom is not very good on this phone. That's the oil sensor there, oil pressure sensor there. Three wire job just move that main battery harness out of the way there. So it just sits there in the block. There's the knock sensor, that's one knock sensor, there's two on this engine, one person. That's for cylinder one and two, that's the, measures the knock on the engine. That. Not a nice manifold take off, but it's a bit of a pain really. Alternator's easy to take off. Other BMWs, it's on the oil filter housing. And I'll tell you another thing you need to check on these, we'll take it off in a minute. Check these always because on these, people break them during service and the oil filter cap centerpiece either breaks or sometimes they leave it in the old filter and you can hear the cavitation noise usually but that can cause a massive problem with oil pressure and usually affects the vanos solenoids mm -hmm. there's your vanos solenoids one and two there i think the top is exhaust and that's intake cam sensor one cam sensor two so let's look at that valve now and see see what we can see i want to get yourself a nice stout good strong 30 30 torques and get your hand on and give it a right good sprag because really they round off very easy and if it rounds off you're going to be in an absolute world of pain there if that rounds off so i took the alternator off really because it's just easy if you get it out the way word of warning with these many years ago when i fixed a lot of these um when they've been in quite some time and the engine should we say not been quite so well looked after um they snap off in the in the block and they're goddamn nightmare to get out so do not wiggle them up and down because you'll weaken it and you'll end up ripping the solenoid body off and you'll end up leaving the main body in the like the non-electrical you'll leave the mechanical part in the in the block then see that's totally and utterly you can't even move that but it was only done last year which makes me think that this car has been stood six months as the customer says can't even move that so that's going to be a bit of a problem that if you start wiggling these now if you start wiggling them up and down you'll snap this electrical body off and you'll leave this bit behind it's an absolute nightmare then you're going to try and fish it out the problem is it's aluminium and then inside is aluminium and it's like the slightest bit of dirt in between this block and this solenoid and it just gets just gets jammed in you know so i'm going to try and get that out now without damaging it and then hopefully if there's bits of metal on it then i can clean it and then write up that you know listen you need to you need to rebuild this engine kind of thing or at the very least you know whip the bottom off and check there's no crap in the in the oil pump and the something you know clean everything out basically this engine 
is map control so it's um it's literally the oil pump is um is a slide pendulum pump and it really literally just ticks over really and it, this this thing this thing is what controls your oil pressure. If this thing's not working, you've got no oil pressure. It's as simple as that. And there's a relief system on there. It goes into a limp mode. And I think it'll run about one bar. So let's whip that out and see if we can crack it on. Yeah, unfortunately, it's crazy tight. And if anyone, by the way, if you're not using BG Oils Inforce, it's not a plug, by the way. I, we have to pay for this. It's the best penetrating oil in the world. I've never used anything as good. I mean, Nano's pretty good, but this stuff's like unbelievably good. A bit messy and I kind of want to really get it there you know that bit of flange uh, very messy stuff but my god I mean I've got things out that have been so tight that even the nano we used didn't come anywhere near close see it bubbling away there now you get yourself a good Absolutely. pair of nipex pliers like this come right in the end where it's you know quite solid and just give it a gentle it really moves at such a small amount. It's very important you don't rush this process. The valve will probably change. I mean, I don't like to, I don't like to put any pressure on the body of any type of valve, but I'm telling you, these are so tight, and if you don't, if you try and pull them or bend them, they literally just just snap and see, it's jammed up again. There, you see. Every now and then, on like a 15 year old plus car, you do get these issues. You just gotta keep working it. I'm actually. I've got the pliers there, not really that tight. It's barely touching it because I don't want to crush it. It might look like it is, but it's not actually. It's really, it needs to be a bit tighter to get to be more effective. But, you know, there's always the chance that customer won't pay a few hundred euro for a new valve. You know what I mean? So we've got to make sure we, we don't damage the damn thing. They're so soft, these. They really are. And what we'll do, we'll put more penetrating spray on now. We'll just whack a bit more bit more spray on there now and see if we can effectively remove it a bit more really good stuff this honest to god best best spray ever is this oh it's so much looser now look at that scene once you get that loose now and you get that spray and you're laughing Still tight. Warn about it and it did snap up in the block. As you can see, it's absolutely pathetically made. Literally the smallest, most garbage crimp you could ever come across. A bit varnished in there, can you see? That's the actuating motor that pushes up and down also on the this is the solenoid basically. Well that's it, that's that's all that holds it on. I'm literally just doing that and it came off, not even moving it up and down so. Basically, I'm going to be in trouble now, and I'm going to try and get that out now. That right, ain't going to be easy. And when they've done a lot of miles like this on their old, there's no other way around it, really. You've got to just try and get it out. And that's the solenoid plunger there. So imagine that goes up and down, up and down, up and down. And that's the bit that actually actuates the oil pressure. I'll probably put a screwdriver in. So that's the oil pressure activation valve lock. So it's pulse width modulating and it's going like thousands of times a second, many thousands of hertz and it's, you know, so if you can imagine probably that's full, full oil pressure and that's like sort of no oil pressure, you know, full, no, full, could be the opposite way around, I'd have to study it, but, so now we're going to get this out of here, gonna, this is the body, this is the block, I'm going to get all this crap out now somehow which ain't going to be easy, I've got to pull that plunger on, get some grips on and try and sprag it out. What I'm now doing is I'm going to out about 12 mil that centre bore. And what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to either use a left-handed tap to go across this distance inside the block to get it out, or I'm going to have to tap it with a conventional tap. In which case, I've got that tool there, which is a lot handier than a conventional tapping tool. So it seems to be 12 mil that. So I have to make a decision now because I've got this left-handed tap but I'll have to chop the end off because it's too deep and I need to chop it up to about here and then it'll bite and then it'll pull it out. It's already loose, I've just tapped it in a bit. Unfortunately, this happens a 15, 16 year old car. Absolutely garbage designed component, should have been like made welded, shouldn't it really? 
wouldn't have, have this problem. But it happens sometimes on Aldens, but the ability to deal with it fast is all that matters, you know. Well, in the end, I decided basically I really didn't want to damage that uh, left handed extraction tool, so I decided just to try and put an M12 tap in very gently and then hopefully jam it into such a point that we can probably extract it with some locking pliers. And these are pretty good taps. I think they're Jedor or maybe some other good brand. We've got a solenoid in there, you see. Sorry, a solenoid. We've got a spring-loaded plunger, which we cannot use the left-handed tap in. Now, a left-handed tap is in that sense a bit better because you go in the opposite way where you need to to remove it of course you, you know you kind of tighten it but it's going the opposite way you know so that's always handy of course we don't want to mess about with this and kind of you know we want to get it a good purchase as they say as Fred Dibner would say who's by the way my hero uh, you know from being from Bolton and all that business which you know I weren't far from like five mile away six mile away so old school you know <laughs> so slow and steady time and patience is my old neighbour Michael would say he's about 95 now and he's still going strong but a little bit I'm digressing a bit there aren't I? I just want to get this valve out which obviously we need replaced now don't we now have we got enough of a purchase in there now the idea also would be if we can't get it out with this, we'll put a bolt in and we'll sprag it all out when we slide on it, you know. I do need some more slide hammer attachments. Right, that's basically locking off now because it's probably at that level. So what we'll do is now we'll try and we'll try and slide hammer it out, but I don't really have so many slide hammer attachments and that's something I really do need to spend some time making. So, <clears throat> with a bit of luck now, it's the only way, it's a bit Heath Robinson, but what can you do kind of thing? Mini slide hammer. It's good, got a pl plenty of force on it. We'll try and just pull this out now sideways, gently. Not really. really gently like that. And then that's got it on it. And it makes me feel very happy because you can imagine you don't want to put any screwdrivers in there because that block, if it gets damaged, everything's gone then and it's ruined. So. Let's have a look. Probably not been out on this. Probably no dirt on this after all this. But we do need to check it because it's the most common cause for oil pressure problems on the N43. There you are. It's full of metal. Let's get it on the bench. And that's your oil pressure issue. That's the reason why. So I'm really pleased. That was a good decision, was that? Wasn't it? If you think about it. So that's the valve. And it's basically just swarf and metal from the... Pretty much from the... Well, well, probably when the timing chain was changed at some point, people never think about this little valve. And you can see those three parts of the bore. That's that's like the, that's the bit where it fits in. This sort of piece here, like you got one, two, three. If you score these, you're going to get a leak through there. You can lose oil pressure that way. Like the bore inside the block, if it works, this will never seal. This is actually, a, believe it or not, kind of a sealing surface in that sense. This is an external sealing surface, so you don't get oil leaks. And then, obviously, that's the internal sealing surface. It's, and you can see there's some very, very fine, sort of, some fine scratches on there. Nothing major. But really, if you damage that, the, the engine's scrap, isn't it? You'd have to sleeve that. But that's absolutely, um, it's goosed, isn't it? I mean if you're wondering why it's got oil pressure problem. If you've got N43 and you don't set this valve out, you'd have because that's the reason. These these fine mesh filters, they don't really do anything. They really don't. Let me zoom right in on that. Look how bad that is. So that's, that's a good example of why if you've got an N43, you should do this as a service item, maybe 20,000 in my opinion. Just put some brake cleaner in it or, <clears throat> or carb cleaner, whatever. Bearing in mind that you really need to clean them from that side through the hole and try and work them up and down if you can. Somehow by tapping them. If you try and go through the mesh, you'll be just pushing it all inside really. They're a bad design. If you think about it, it's bloody rubbish, isn't it? I mean, it's like nonsense kind of thing when you think about it. I mean, it's all right in a laboratory or it's some engineering place. And there you can see where it broke off as I was just gently twisting. This was stood still. The body was like, 
this bit was completely stuck and then it was just rotating on and then obviously it just gave there. So it was a good idea to use that tap, wasn't it? I uh, didn't think it would bite. It was lucky it was like literally about 11.7 mil and a 12 mil bit. Okay, it's a bit crossed ready, but who cares? So we'll have to order a new valve and crack on with it. So I'm backyard mechanic in it today. So basically, it's just such a pain to bring it inside. I thought I might as well do this bad boy outside kind of thing. And this is older than me. It's about 45 year old, this. I've had it for years since UK, you know. Some old guy gave it me in England years ago. Put some lubrication on it. You never know. It might help. When you do have a damaged filter centre, you'll hear the cavitation and you're going choo, 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 choo. nice sound effects. But anyway, that's what it sounds like, and that can cause problems with um, the Vanos solenoids, which are there. Usually, <coughs> Vanos exhaust for some reason. Well, I hope you like my video. Probably a bit of a long one. Um, not put any music in this video, did I? Uh, basically, because uh, I think people have had enough of it.